Okay, my friends, you're in for a treat. This is my DNA test. I had three of them done, and two of them were giant human beings, and they just can't accept this because I also have things that aren't even human, but they're damn close to human. That's a no-toe, we call these. The toes are inside. There's a big bone, just like you have in your foot, and then one comes down the side, same way, only instead of having tendons inside, they have springs. And that's how this thing was able to spring and walk and... And so we have, and, and we have other things just that nobody could ever possibly imagine. And I'm going to be talking about Brian Forrester here. And, and again, there's no relationship between Brian and I, so don't think he endorses anything that I say. Now, before I start, I just want to tell you, I have, you know, Brian and I have no relationship whatsoever. Although I do research, he does research. He's done the CAT scans and DNA on his stuff. I've done the CAT scans and DNA on my stuff. He's had the same reception I've had. Totally ignored by mainstream. Not a, not a single academic will, will come forward and say, all right, let's discuss this evidence. That, to me, is not acceptable. I can't see any reason not to look into this by academia. Can you? He's shown that these mummies were red-haired and blonde-haired people that... There's no way they can account for them being where they are found in Peru. All right, I showed you my my paperwork for my DNA test. Now, he had the same things done, and he's getting the mitochondrial DNA, same thing. Listen. On pre-Columbian in that area should be of mitochondrial maternal blood group, um, haplogroup B, if they descended from people who crossed over the Bering Land Bridge. But of the 20 skulls that we tested, only two had haplogroup B. And that, again, is something that archaeologists don't want to, uh, to, to discuss. We, um, after we did the DNA testing, we sent the results to the head archaeologist in Peru, who's the head of our, our study, and I got no response from him. So a month later, I went to visit him in his office without telling him I was going to show up because all of the other maternal DNA didn't correspond to Native American DNA. And so uh, we asked if we could do further DNA testing, and he simply said, no, because with these results that you got, obviously every sample was contaminated. But he knew fully well that the people who did, the two people from the U.S. that did the DNA testing, they had their DNA testing, and their DNA did not match any of the results we found. All right, see, this is the kind of stuff, the exact same thing I met. And it, it, the, the lab that did my DNA work, he got basically attacked, I know, because he, he contacted me, said, you know, make sure that you want, they, everybody understands, you're the one that took the DNA samples out of there. So, because that, they were co contacted him saying, oh, they had to be contaminated, they had to be contaminated. He said, no, what I tested was what it, this guy sent me. And he said, you just be sure that you make sure that you tell everybody you are the one that took the samples. Because if I just put my own blood in there, yeah, obviously. But it, I, I actually had literally blood was sent to them. So, you know, as close to blood as you can get from something that is, is dead. <laughs> he said it was excellent quality. So Brian is in the same condition I'm in here now. Nobody will pay attention to this. The, the students, I believe, are being deceived. It's, it certainly seems to me. Because if, if Brian is doing the work that these guys should be doing, I am doing the work these guys should be doing. We're looking for evidence and proof of our history and our past and what things were really, truly like. And you can forecast a lot to the future if you look to the past. And we are now just completely lost because our history is wrong. So much is wrong. It's, it, I, I just don't have time to go over it. And it's because of academic dismissal and the peer review process is literally makes everybody afraid to speak up, literally afraid. And they, they have right to be because they, their lives will be ruined for speaking up, just like Emanuel Velikowski, just like mine would have been. I couldn't care less about what they say about me. But if I was in that business and I cared about a reputation and a status and awards and this and that and having everybody fawning over me, well, I certainly couldn't say the things I'm saying. And Brian is putting himself out as a hero.
as far as I'm concerned. He's going all over the world. Now, he's, he's doing a lot more than I'm doing. I'm just looking at things, and I, I understand the chemistry. I understand, I, I, all the stuff I have is right here on my own property. I don't have to travel around the world. But I have stuff that nobody else has. Nobody. And it just happens to be this exact spot where I am. The petrification process is absolutely stunning. Even geese. <laughs> it's because of the aluminum silicates that invaded the collagens. You see that? This is feathers. And inside is the basalts. That's where his neck was. You can see it if you look and you can see the patterns. And I, I have blood coming out of everything. I could get blood out of this. And all you have to do is break off the pieces and go deep inside and get the blood out. And that's what freaked them out, especially when I showed them this. All right, you saw the lung. That was DNA tested. Blood coming right out of them. You can see the alveoli. I have them coming out of my ears. I have so many mud fossils. You know, I was the one who discovered them, so I got a lot of them. And here's a, a giant hand. That's a hand. That is a left hand. You put your left hand out, you'll see the exact same thing. There's a tendon coming down here. This goes off to the left. This is the bumper pad on your hand. And this is actually the pinch. You see the little pinch here? <laughs> it's right in between your hand. And this is the bumper pad. And this is the grip skin that's coming off. You see that silvery looking stuff? That is the grip skin. And let me show you the big one. You think this is big? That's over three feet wide, that hand. But here's the one that really blew them out of the water. I mean, that's enough to, to destroy them. <laughs> but this is the one that really got them. <laughs> this one here is like 30 inches long. It's just gigantic. It's a fingernail here. It's absolutely perfect. Uh, you know, it's it's a little weathered. Yes, absolutely. But you can see the fingernail. And I smashed this off so I could get down inside. Because you got to get inside to get the blood. The surface is all, you know, obviously weathered and no good. But it's hard as a, a rock. <laughs> that little pad right there is the thing that bumps up against your next bone. This is the piece I broke off, and let me show you. You'd expect if the fingernail was good, there'd be fingerprints. Well, guess what? We got some fingerprints right here for you. There they are. You see that? Those are the sweat pores. You see them? That are in the grip skin. And I showed you that other big hand that was laying out there. That's the grip skin that was peeling off, just like this did. When I smacked it, it just popped right off. It's this big, thick, just exactly like that. It popped right off. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have any tools you can cut into a gigantic stone like that, so I figured I'd just smash into it, <laughs> and I did. And uh, that's what the fingerprints are like. So if this is not able to be looked at because there's no evidence, I say there is evidence. And, uh, and this was DNA tested, too. I drilled down into and got blood out of there. You get blood virtually out of any rock if you go deep inside of it. You know, any rock that's it's, it's, it's a body part, absolutely. All right, so what am I hoping for is the end result of all this. I would love to see Brian you know, work with me. I have evidence. He has evidence. Uh, there's a lot of people that have a lot of viewers. I can't get to people because I've been so restricted everywhere across the board. And I don't even know if I'm getting through to anybody in academia because I've been put on spam lists. Now, what I need to do is be able to work with some of these people. I, I've heard L.A. Marzulli is a guy that is interested in this deeply, and I should contact him. Joe Rogan, I've had a heard a whole bunch of people, and I've tried over the course of years. Um, what's uh, I don't know. There's all kinds of them, and um, nobody's ever contacted me back. Now I don't know if anybody gets my stuff. They just I never get any contact back. So what we need to do is get get a, a group together here so that we can can get this made into an organized you know discussion. And have some with people that have evidence. Like, I have very good evidence. He has very good evidence. I hear from people all day. I saw this. I saw that. I saw this. Well, that's good. And, and it's probably, you might be 100% right. But we have the actual evidence. And that's what we have to stay in that realm of true evidence. Specimens. Tests. Chemistry. DNA. And that's what we're doing here. We don't want to get way off in the woods with all these other things that may be right. I can't say they're not. 
but I can't say they are. I can say the things I'm showing are. Brian can say the things he's showing are. And to have them dismissed like this, I believe that could come right into academic fraud. And when we're talking about academic fraud, we're, I'm talking about the top universities throughout the world because that's what I did. I presented them to only to the top ones. Well, I presented them everywhere. I went even to community colleges. They totally refused it. And they were all afraid. Basically, I could tell they were afraid. The ones that would engage with me, I knew that they they would, they would, literally almost told me, I can't, I can't speak about that. That's not that's not in my realm. No, 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 no. That's, and same thing with Brian. You must have made a big mistake. You just got to be wrong because I was told all this other stuff. Well, that other stuff is wrong. And it's now time to rectify this terrible tragedy that's been lingering forever and I mean forever it goes all the way back to Velikovsky in the 1950 worlds in collision his book was destroyed by the academics they made him take it off the bookshelves after 11 weeks on the top of the bestseller list because they threatened the book book uh, publisher to never buy any books from him again. Academia, academia controls the world. Believe me, I've tried. I've gone to. I've tried government. I've tried news organizations, TV shows, government people, and they all refuse to even respond. Because once they respond, then they're in a loop, and then you can say, "Hey, he said this. He said that." Well, they, if they just hide out and never say a word, that's what I have now come up with. They just will not respond to me. Because I know that I can make them, I can because then I can debate them, debate them by them even responding to me. I can say, "Oh, here's what he said," and I do. I did. I said it to all of them, and I I responded to Derek Briggs from Yale University, David Reich from John, uh, from um, Harvard, uh, Peter uh, not Peter, uh, it's uh, Salzburg. His name was Salzburg was my professor from Johns Hopkins and I've named all these people and said you know why won't they look at this stuff are they obligated to look at this I don't know I'm asking the questions why not I'm not making any accusations I'm just saying I am showing you what academic fraud is that's what they say that's not my words and I'm showing you what happened to our evidence that is evidence. It's not just statements. They're evidence and how it was responded to. Now, you make your decision. Is that acceptable? If you're a student, you're saying, oh, I'm going to go to geology and I'm going to go to archaeology and anthropology and all this stuff and expect it to, to learn the correct stuff, not knowing that all of this stuff has been refused. But if you don't get that degree, and agree to what they tell you to say, you're just going to work in the fields with the rest of the slaves. It's become a slave society dictated by academia. And all they do is create new slave masters out of there. You say what I tell you to say, we'll give you a piece of paper, you can make some money. Then you tell them to say what we told you to say. And if they say it, they can go make money. They don't say it, put them back in the fields. Last word. Okay, so we know we have evidence, we know we have documentation, tests, specimens, all that stuff. So what is the procedure for investigating academic fraud? And does that fall into the realm? It appears to. It says defining academic fraud, and this is how they investigate it. It says academic fraud involves a deliberate effort to deceive and includes, well, so it's, it's a deliberate effort. So let's start with that. It's a deliberate effort. Not just an accident, not just incompetence. It's a deliberate effort. Can we prove that? I don't know. To deceive and include and includes plagiarism, fabrication of data, misrepresentation of historical sources, tampering with the evidence, and in our case, it's selective suppression of unwanted or unacceptable results. Now, they won't allow us to present the CAT scans and the DNA and the specimens and all that stuff. Now, is that just because the people that we're dealing with are are incompetent? I mean, that, that's the only way you could put it, that to say, no, that doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, we don't want to see it. Now, how could that be a competent, you know, really effective scientific researcher 
which is what all teachers should be. They should have some drive to research. And I don't see that as happening. I see it's, they want to protect their jobs, really, it's basically, and they want to protect the funding of the people that are giving them money to do all kinds of things that are, 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 are whatever they're doing. Now, I'm not calling everybody a fraud. I'm not calling them liars. But I, at this point, I, I find it hard to come up with reasonable, you know, explanations for why they have been unwilling to even examine. Now, I could see him saying, all right, let's take a look at it, we'll do the tests on it, and then we'll tell you you're wrong. And that, that would be fine, because then I could go back and forth. But now it's just you're wrong, go away. That is not acceptable. And that, I, I, I when you see what it says about, uh, you know, well, selective suppression, that's it right there. What is fraud? Fraud is something that's legal. And fraud is something the students should, I would think they could do a class action and say, you know, these people have just defrauded us. I have a lot of names and times and places and dates that I've, I've sent these things out to everybody, literally everybody, for six, seven years. There's nobody should be not informed about this. It's, you know, they've, I've been told to go away. And so the same thing with Brian Forrester. Well, here, I'm just going to put a clip from his little video here.